Erling and Hook win the AC World Series in New York, while Gabbard beats Corville to the Big Apple. PWA freestyle season kickoff for Estredo. Padge Burroughs leaves on a high note. And now in the newsroom, here is Mia Chiran. SC Sports, plug into the action. Welcome back, NC Sports fans, for another sensational edition. A number of breaking stories have reached the newsroom this week, and as we just saw, New York is the world sailing capital at the moment. But from the Americas to Europe and then on to Bali, there's lots more happening in today's lineup. Two for two, Kiwi sensations Burling and Tube conquer New York City at the America's Cup World Series. The Transat, Gabar and Coville duel across the Atlantic to the Manhattan finish line. 1,300 windsurfers from 38 countries meet in Goisson for a fun but winless stiffy wind. Meanwhile in Austria, José Goyito Estredo wins the PWA freestyle kickoff. Roar and Poso clinch the Hamburg Grand Slam at the Star Sailors League. Wally's Max's TP52 swans, Jays and Dragons only at Palmarela. Plus, back-to-back -back wins and goodbyes from Taj Burroughs at the WSL Bali Pro. And lots more coming up. Just who are these guys? Burling and Tuke. Tuke and Burling. Well, if you still don't know, they won their 26th straight event title on the 49ers a couple of weeks ago at the Sailing World Cup in here. Clearly, they are the real favorites. While at the America's Cup, they've already won Act 1 in Oman for an early lead in the World Series. Now, these sailing All Blacks brought their haka to New York. And if you can make it there, well, you know, you can make it anywhere. Here's today's top story. Making headlines around the globe, the America's Cup Flying Circus stormed New York last weekend with a sensational event on the Hudson. As reportedly up to 80,000 fans flocked through the lower Manhattan shoreline. Only the wind did not fully cooperate, allowing just the three valid races on a very tricky course. But that would not stop the excitement, especially when Kiwis Peter Burling, Blair Took, and veteran Glenn Ashby on Team Emirates snatched an unlikely victory on the very last race. Once again, a fairly even playing field in the Big Apple spelled the success for several top teams. But consistency really made the difference. Aussie and Nathan Outridge started strong with the Swedes on Artemis for a win in race one, followed by Ben Ainsley's Briss on Land Rover Bar and New Zealand racking up points in third. A still limping Franck Amar back after serious foot injury got satisfaction by winning race two on Groupe Amar and putting behind a defender Jimmy Spithill with the local heroes of Oracle USA. Again, the Kiwis went on points with a third place. Race three delivered the real game changer with Emirates first up badly botching the start and getting stuck on the pin. It all seemed lost for the Kiwis, but taking advantage of a final wind lull, they first uh, caught up with the fleet and then slipped away on a lonely gust, managing the impossible. No luck there, just sheer determination and a great sailing. The Americans had to settle for second, and XO Black Dean Barker nailed an important third place with SoftBank Team Japan. A disappointing weekend instead for Land Rover Bar, with Ben Ainsley in fifth overall, and Artemis closing last. The undisputed winner in New York, Emirates Team New Zealand put just two points over Oracle and eight over Groupama. Now the Kiwis continue to dominate as this America's Cup World Series moves on to Chicago starting June 10.
Windsurfing pioneer Robin Aish gave family, friends and fans worldwide a real scare last week in Hawaii. Still jumping off waves, this was one hard landing for the 53-year-old icon. Fortunately, he's already on his way to a speedy recovery. Claudia Casagrande has the story. Windsurfing legend Robbie Naish is out of hospital and on the road to recovery after breaking his pelvis in a kiting accident during a recent photo shoot. Naish published the news of his injury on Facebook, saying he wanted to get the word out before rumors started to spread. It's the first serious injury of his four-decade career. The 53-year-old, who won his first windsurfing championship at just 13, dominated the windsurfing scene in the 70s and 80s before moving on to conquer the kite world in the 90s. Today, Naish is a bona fide international sports celebrity whose name appears on many popular lines of sailboards, sails and kite surfing equipment. Naish responded to an outpouring of support on social media by posting a second Facebook message saying he was overwhelmed by the amount of support he'd received and reassuring fans he was on the road to recovery. Of course, all the best to Robin Aish from all of us here at the Nautical Channel. In 1,300 for a windless but fun Defi wind. Estredo reigns in Podesdorf, Sailfest in Palma Vela, and the big check goes to Oja and Ponceau at the Star Sailors League in Hamburg. It's a packed edition, so let's check out the NC Sports Briefs. Thirteen hundred windsurfers from 28 nations descended on Grousin in the south of France last weekend to challenge the Tremontane at the 16th edition of the mythical Defi Wind, but the wind refused to blow. Instead of riding waves, windsurfing superstars like Antoine Albeau, Pierre Mortefont and Thomas Traversa spent the weekend signing autographs. Philippe Brew, creator and director of the legendary 20 nautical mile regatta, officially scrapped the race last Saturday evening in view of unfavorable weather conditions. Jose Goyito Estredo left his mark on Lake Neusiedlerse last weekend as the Venezuelan rider nailed an important victory in Austria for the season opener of the PWA Freestyle World Cup 2016. Wodersdorf uh, delivered supreme wind conditions uh, starting with 40 knots decreasing to 20 knots for the entire competition. Following a dismal 2015 with an 8th place overall, Goyito has now put the lid on any doubts regarding his form. Big surprise from 20-year-old Amado Reswick from Bonaire, who forced Estredo to a single elimination final, but was narrowly defeated by just uh, two points for second place. Third place honors in Podersdorf for Francis Adrien Bosson. Closing the event in front of thousands of fans, uh, Tonky Franz, another Bonairean, uh, won the toe-in competition beachside. Next uh, stop uh, for PWA freestylers will be the Fuerteventura Classic in late July. Despite less than ideal conditions, the 13th edition of the Palma Vela in Mallorca, Spain once again confirmed its reputation as the Mediterranean's premier open regatta. A total of 110 boats from 17 countries took part this year in five days of intense racing. Of the nine crews battling out in the TP52 class, 52 Super Series champions Quantum Racing emerged victorious, beating out last year's winners Azura, who had to settle for second place. The Wally and Swan classes were tightly contested with single point victories for Jean Charles Deco's Wally 77 J1 and Christian Plump's Elena Nova, respectively. Rounding out the final results, Bowie Becking and his J Class Lionheart swept every race in the Maxis. Javier Chacategui's HM Hotels prevailed in the J80. Javier Scherk locked down the Dragon Class, and David Barber's Fine Fettle walked away with the wind in the Flying 15.
Francis Xavier Rohrard and Pierre Alexis Ponceau walked off the podium with a fat 25,000 US dollar check last week in Hamburg after winning the Star Sailor League City Grand Slam on Lake Ulster. 100,000 people reportedly watched on the shorelines as the French crew came on top of a fleet of 86 teams. This was one tight regatta with 11 races and Norway's Melody and Refking took a second just two points behind while Kusnierewicz and Siki of Poland finished third overall. Now out of the Olympic Games, the Star Sailors League is successfully revitalizing this legendary and undying class with a worldwide circuit that will culminate in the big final scheduled for this November in the Bahamas. Offshore solo sailors François Gabard and Thomas Coville have just crossed the Atlantic Ocean in record time and in a dramatic duel to the finish line in New York City. But Massif dominated the last stretch. Stay tuned for the updates on the first arrivals at the Transat and more coming up on NC Sports after the break. We'll be right back. Welcome back to NC Sports. If the America's Cup dazzled New Yorkers last weekend, the Transat put on yet another multi-hall show in the Big Apple this week with the arrivals of Maxi Trimorans, Massif and Sodebo last Wednesday. A simply awesome race by these two French solo sailors who battled right from the start in Plymouth all the way to the finish line. Wednesday, May 10, New York Harbor. After eight days, eight hours, 54 minutes and 39 seconds, a new solo record for the Atlantic crossing goes down in sailing history. Covering the over 3,000 nautical miles from Plymouth on his massif, François Gabart is over the finish line on the Hudson and wins the Transat in the Ultime class for Maxi Trimorans. Gabart actually sailed on an unconventional deep uh, southern course for over 4,500 nautical miles above the trade winds, setting an average speed of 23.11 knots. Chased by a determined uh, Thomas Coville, this was a true battle of the giants, with Sodebo closing in second place just nine hours later. Actual with skipper Yves Leblevec is expected in port early on the weekend in third. I crossed Atlantic on a wonderful boat and uh, it was a challenge, it was not easy, it's, it's a boat that's really difficult to sail. And it was my first one and I didn't know if I was able to do it and I did it and I did it well, I, I won. So <laughs> I'm, uh, I'm really proud and happy for sure. I think with the class rule team we're, we're going in a process that is uh, historical for sailing offshore. And this is really nice to arrive with a boat in New York. So aesthetic uh, with the sunset, it was perfect. Exceptional battles are still ongoing at the Transat Baker League. A three-way race between Le Cluage, Ryu and uh, Dick is uh, taking center stage among the Emoka 60, with the trio now on the final stretch uh, to New York. Off the Labrador coast, Isabel Joschke reconfirms that there is no gender gap in offshore solo sailing. Her Generali Horizon Mixité has led the Class 40 fleet across the Atlantic. Out of the penalty box, British skipper Phil Sharp on Imeris is right behind with a Thibaut Rochelle Camus on Solidaire. Racing solo within the solo race, as ambassador on the legendary Pandrika 2, Loïc Peyron is now a good 215 nautical miles ahead of Erwin Tabarly's 1964 performance.
Well, it certainly takes a special kind of hero to race in the Transat. And speaking of heroes, another top athlete has just ended his professional career on a high note. With back-to-back -back wins at the Bali Pro, Australia's Taj Burroughs says goodbye to pro surfing. Andy Van Ziel has the story. Karamis and Taj do it again. In one of the last heats in his professional surfing career, Taj Barrow takes the win at the Commune Bali Pro, presented by the Mad Hueys. Barrow clinched victory in the final minute against underdog Shane Holmes, who was a standout all event, also beating Joel Parkinson. He is so rock solid, never even seen him, so I've heard of him. And from day one, I've seen how good he served, and then he beat Joel, and then he made the final. I'm just like, wow, this prick's gnarly. <laughs> so I wasn't taking him lightly, but um, yeah, it took me just a while to find my way. After getting himself into a combination situation, Taj used his experience at the significant wave to select the bigger waves with scoring potential and stalled into the best barrel of the event before coming out and smashing two turns that left him with a score of 9.67 out of a possible 10 for a heat total of 18.74 out of a possible 20. Taj Burrow will serve his last professional event at the Fiji Pro later this year. The 37-year-old surfer is universally adored, not only because of his charm, but also for the iconic surf films that have influenced every surfer's career. Taj Barrow has won everywhere. Who could forget 2007 Jay Bay? The 2009 Pipe Masters? Ringing the bell in 2007? And being carried up the sand at the Quick Pro Gold Coast in 2001, 2010 and 2012. This win in Bali is a significant one for Taj Barrow and will go down in the history books. The buzz is on and teams are already at the docks in Charleston as North America's top double-handed offshore regatta, the Atlantic Cup, is gearing up for the start of leg one to Brooklyn. New York. Ten skippers are lined up for this year's edition and on May 29th we'll face the first 648 nautical miles northbound. Then from New York the fleet will head to Portland, Maine in early June where it will all come down to fully crewed inshore racing. Nautical Channel is once again a proud media partner of the Atlantic Cup. And NC Sports will bring you the full updates, highlights and results from this one-of-a-kind All-American offshore race. <music> Top match racers land in Copenhagen. The WSL Tour hits Rio, RC44 Fleet racing in Spain and PWA Slalom in Korea. It's all happening now on NC Sports 360. It's another packed week for water sports around the globe. The World Match Racing Tour is now already on the water in Copenhagen for round three. Canfield, uh, Sehested, Williams, Guichard, and the more top wizards of this one-on-one -on -one, uh, sailing game are now delivering high-speed tactics with a new M32 catamaran. Time uh, for some home court advantage at the Men's Rio Pro for the stronger Brazilian squad. World champs De Sousa and Medina need a comeback. Toledo is back from injury, but they have many more. Watch out for the new Italian sensation, Leonardo Fioravanti. All top-seeded women pass the early rounds at this Rio Pro. Wright, Conlog, Moore, Gilmore, Fitzgibbons. But do not underestimate the outsiders. With rainy conditions are kicking off the regatta, the second stop of the RC44 World Championship is underway with match and fleet racing in Spain's Soto Grande. 
Britain's uh, Chris Bake and uh, Team Aqua are fighting to keep the lead in both the disciplines against a strong fleet and especially the Russian Armada with Bronenosek, Nika and Sheref. Over 60 PWA slalom riders are getting ready in Korea for the first World Cup event of the season in Ulsan. The strong and regular cross shore winds of Jinha Beach are welcoming windsurfing greats like reigning world champs Antoine Albo and Sarakito Fringa. A big battle on the water is also expected here, so stay tuned to NC Sports for full results. Just a few weeks ago, we ran a story about the unlikely winners of the first edition of the Whitbread Round the World Race, the Mexican crew of Sayula 2. We are now extremely saddened to report the death of their extraordinary captain, Ramon Carlin, passed away last week at age 92 in Mexico City. He will always be remembered for his underdog victory at the first ever crewed Round the World Race a passion for sailing that had no equals. Their feat is now being retold through the successful docufilm The Weekend Sailors, directed by Bernardo Arzuaga and touring major film fests worldwide. Riva del Garda, Trinité-sur-Mer and Possum Lake, Texas. It's the world tour in a flash. Mark the dates on the NC Sports calendar. The third edition of the GC32 Racing Tour kicks off with the Riva Cup on Lake Garda, Italy from May 26th to 29th. The 2016 lineup marks the debut of sailors like Frank Camas, skipper of the French Challenge to the Americas Cup here with Team Norauto, and reigning D35 champion Alex Schneider and Team Tilt. 2015 champ Jan Guichard returns to the Tour at the helm of Spindrift, as does former Swiss Olympic star Flavio Marazzi and Armin Strom. The season opener will also see G32 class founder Laurent Len take to the water for the first time with Team Umperex. Aspiring Transat sailors will get a chance to test their stuff at the upcoming Mini en May, kicking off in La Trinita sur Mer, France, May 21st to 28th. A key event on the Mini 650 circuit calendar, the event will see the participation of up to 50 sailors, all eager to secure a spot on the Mini Transat. The challenging 500-mile course starts with a long stretch towards the Sea of Iroise, then it's on to Pertuis d'Antioche before passing near the Gerwand estuary and heading back to the starting point. Hell's Gate at Possum Kingdom Lake in Texas will set the stage for the opening event of the 2016 Cliff Diving World Series on June 4th. 14 men and 8 women will compete this year for the chance of being crowned the world's best cliff divers. Defending men's and women's champions, Gary Hunt from England and San Diego native Rachel Simpson both scored back-to-back -back wins in the two previous competitions at this venue. Towering 30 meters above the water, the twin cliffs at Hell's Gate stand at almost three times the height of Olympic diving platforms. Well, we've managed to pack most of it in, but there's just so much happening and so many great stories out there on the water this season. We've just run out of time for today. So stay tuned, we'll catch up next week with all the latest. I'm Mia Charan, and remember, plunge into the action with NC Sports. <laughs>